So I thought I'd do a intro into what I've built. Um, the head is on a tilting gimbal so it allows it to move in any direction because of these bearings. There are needle rollers in each of these to allow free movement. You can see as I tilt the head left and right it moves on the fore and aft bearings and forward and backwards tilts on the left and right bearings. So it can move in any direction. There are connecting rods going down to this assembly. You can see that pushing both rods up and down would move it forward and backwards and left or right tilts them. That's just connected via that's a hollow shaft and then a rod on the bottom going to the cyclic stick at the front. The drive shaft goes right through the middle of this housing here. There's a nut inside there with two taper roller bearings and they uh, are pulled together by the nut on the shaft. You can see in there there's a taper lock bushing on the bottom pulley and it, it pulls on that one but still allows it to rotate. The shaft goes up through this housing here. There's another supporting bearing there and the taper roller bearing at the top. That's what's taken all the load from this bottom rotor. And the shaft continues up to the second rotor head. And that's obviously also pulling on the shaft, which the bottom taper rollers are taking the force for that. The square section at the top, that's heat shrunk onto the shaft. And there's a bolt going right through. So come down to the belt. You can see how it reverses the drive. One belt runs on the back side of one pulley. The other belt runs on the front side. So you turn in opposite directions. The primary drive pulley has four sprag bearings in them, one way bearings, so it can allow the drive shaft to rotate separately to the rotor. If the engine was to suddenly stop, the rotors would continue spinning for a little while. The drive shaft, these are Audi A4 CV joints, tripod CV joints, and it allows them to plunge by means of three bearings so they still move freely under torque and then the left and right is obviously taken by the same joint. This is the clutch. I've used RK400 clutch internal friction pads and just made a, an aluminium housing for them. You can see the Flexible drive coupling is installed to take out some of the torque spikes that the engine produces. It uh, allows it to rotate a little bit. You can't see it, but when this is having a torque spike applied to it, it will actually twist a little bit and take out some of that. The throttle is just a, a bar bent bit of bar to uh, facilitate the throttle so I can instead of having a cable I prefer to have a bar because you can pull the shuttle shut whereas a cable relies on a spring. I've got uh, rotor RPM in blue, engine RPM in red and of uh, engine temperature is the other one. Got a temporary fuel tank in place. This is not where it's going to be because it needs to be on the center of gravity of the machine. Otherwise the CG will change as you use the fuel. So that's just to uh, just on there for now for testing and the exhaust is not how it's going to be. It's just something I put on for now. So the two rotor blades on the bottom are finished. 
apart from obviously the uh, the blade straps, which are not going to be wood, they're going to be 7075 T651. I want to finish them. They can go on, and the top rotor is ready for them as well. And that's where I am.